Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Ericstrains.com, and today I'm going to be reviewing and running the new Lionel Vision Line 4664 Challenger. The Vision Line Challenger was originally offered in the 2010 Volume 1 catalog from Lionel, and it was finally shipped in December of 2010. Now, they offered five Challengers in the catalog. They offered two Union Pacific coal burning Challengers, like the one you see here. They offered two Union Pacific oil burning challengers in the attractive Greyhound paint scheme, and then they also offered a coal burning Clinchfield challenger. As I said, this engine is part of Lionel's Vision line of products. Now, if you're not familiar with the Vision line, Vision line basically represents the very best of the best that Lionel has to offer. They use the most cutting edge technology, features, and detailing to produce some of the most amazing trains I've ever seen. Now, in previous videos, I've reviewed the Vision Line diesels as well as the Vision Line ethanol tank cars. And if you've seen those reviews, you know that I'm a big fan of Vision Line products. I think it's a revolutionary product line that is really pushing the envelope as far as what is possible in model railroading. And this Challenger is certainly no exception to that. I think it is by far, in my opinion, one of the best three rail O scale steam engines ever made. In fact, when I picked it up at the train store, the owner of the store said that he thinks it's hands down the best three rail O scale steam engine ever made. And that meant a lot to me because he's been selling trains for a long time and he's probably sold hundreds of different types of steam engines. And for him to say that about this really carried a lot of weight for me. This is an absolutely stellar engine and the technology, the features and the details are just going to blow you away. Okay, so let's start off with some of the basics. This is a 4664 articulated steam engine. Now, for those of you who are new to steam, I will explain what those terms mean. 4664 refers to the wheel configuration on the engine. We've got four wheels up here on the pilot. We've got six drive wheels here, six drive wheels here, and four wheels on the trailing truck. So therefore, this is designated as a 4664. Now, it's also called articulated. What does articulated mean? Well, it means that the front set of drivers is on an articulation point that allows the front driver to turn independently of the rest of the engine. Now, because this is an articulated steam engine, it is quite large. This model is 32 inches from coupler to coupler. And because of that, you're going to need some pretty wide radius turns to handle this engine. The minimum suggested radius for this engine is 072, and I would have to agree with that. I would recommend 072 or wider. Now, I know some of you are going to ask if this can run on 063 or 054. I don't know. I have not tested it on 063 or 054, but my guess is that even if you could get it to run right, it's going to look really awkward going through curves because the overhang is going to be so dramatic. So you're certainly free to try it on 063 or 054, but as far as my official recommendation, I'm going to side with Lionel and recommend 072 or wider. Like all Vision Line engines, this engine comes equipped with Lionel's Legacy command system, and I would strongly recommend running it with Legacy. Now, you can also run this engine with classic TMCC or even in conventional mode with just a transformer and no command system at all. But if you do that, you're going to miss out on a lot of the really cool Legacy features that make this engine so amazing. So if you're going to spend all the money on this engine, do the right thing and run it with Legacy. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend buying this engine unless you're going to run it with Legacy. So now let's go over some of the features and details of this engine. Down here on the bottom of the engine, the wheels are all very nicely done. The valve gear here is very highly detailed and when this engine is in motion in a few minutes, you'll see all sorts of busy action going on down here. It looks really cool. Got a nice little red valve there, and then we've got nice detailing on the trailing truck. Now, on each of these driver sets, the rear wheel has a rubber traction tire. So you've got one here and one on the other side, and the same back here. So you've got a total of four traction tires for plenty of pulling power. If you look up here at this front pilot truck, you'll notice that these wheels are not quite prototypical looking because they've got those big flanges that we've come to expect on all O-gauge engines. But if you want a more prototypical pilot truck up here, the engine comes with an alternative truck that you can put on to replace that one. And this is it right here. It's got wheels that are a little more prototypically sized and flanges that aren't quite as big. So if you want to, you can swap them out. All you do is take out a few screws, put the new truck on, and then you're good to go. 
Moving up from the wheels, we've got all sorts of wonderful detailing on the underside of the engine. All sorts of valves and pipes and so forth. Got a very nicely detailed ash pan back here. One of the neatest things is this pipe here, it actually hinges with the articulation point. So when the drivers turn, the pipe turns with it so that the steam can still get to these valves here. So it's really neat to see when the engine is in action. Now you've got several lighting effects on the underside here. We've got two ground lights, one here and one here, and there's two on the other side as well. And then on the ash pan, you've got the variable ash pan glow that works when the engine is in operation. Here's the front of the engine, and as you can see, there's lots of nice detailing up here. On the pilot area, we've got separately applied handrails and a couple of cut bar, as well as some air hoses. One of the nice things about the pilot is that it swings open to reveal a scale coupler, like that. Now, if you're interested in double heading this thing, they've also packaged a dummy O-gauge coupler with the engine, and you can swap it out for the scale coupler, and that way you can double head it. And then when you want to put it away, you just swing it shut like that. Up here on the front of the boiler, we've got lots of other nice detailing. We've got a separately applied handrail and a separately applied nameplate. We've got operating marker lights and illuminated number boards. The front of the boiler swings open like that to reveal a detailed interior. And the door is held shut by magnets, so it'll only open if you want it to. And then up here, we've got this nice swinging bell. Now, unlike the other Vision Line steam engines that Lionel has put out, this bell does not swing back and forth automatically when you ring the bell on the engine. The reason is because on the other Vision Line steam engines, the bell was located back towards the rear of the engine, closer to the cab, and back there, there was room for all the electrical and mechanical components needed to make that bell swing back and forth. But since on the Challenger, the bell is up front, there's simply no room for all those components to make the bell swing. On both sides of the boiler, you've got these smoke deflectors. These smoke deflectors can be detached from the engine if you want. There are two screws underneath each smoke deflector. You just take those screws out and the deflectors will pop right off. Just make sure you don't scratch the paint when you're taking them off though. Up on top here, we've got the big twin smokestacks that look really cool when the engine is in operation. Back here, we've got all sorts of separately applied hand painted details. And right here is the smoking whistle. This has become one of the hallmark features of the Vision Line steam engines, and it is really neat. There's a little hole underneath the whistle here, and when you blow the whistle, steam shoots out of the whistle just like it would on the prototype. It is really amazing to see, and if you haven't seen it before, I promise you it's going to blow your mind when you see it. Now, the smoke fluid that supplies the whistle with smoke comes from these smokestacks. They share the same reservoir. So when you fill the smokestack with smoke fluid, it'll supply the smoke fluid for the whistle as well. Now when the engine is new, in the instructions, Lionel tells you to prime the smoke unit with 30 to 40 drops of smoke fluid poured down one of these stacks, and that will supply enough smoke fluid for both of these smokestacks as well as the whistle. Moving back from the whistle, we've got all sorts of nice detailing back here. Lots of hand-painted, separately applied details up top separately applied handrails that run the length of the boiler, lots of nice molded in detail, lots of nice rivet detail. The walkways on either side of the engine are perforated with drainage holes, which is a really nice touch. And then on the rear sand dome here, if you pop the top off, that reveals some of the controls for the engine. There are five switches here. These three right here control the smoke units on the engine. This is your run program switch, and then right here is the switch for the Odyssey speed control. Let's talk about these smoke switches for just a minute. These three switches allow you to manually control the smoke effects for the engine. The first one allows you to control the main smoke stack. This one allows you to control the smoke effects for the whistle. And this one allows you to control the smoke effects for the dynamo and the injector. Now I haven't shown you the dynamo or the injector yet. I'll show you those in just a few minutes. These three smoke switches have two purposes. First of all, if you were going to run this engine conventionally without any legacy command system at all, you could use these to manually control the smoke units on the engine. Secondly, if you run the engine with legacy, these switches give you the option of controlling each of the individual smoke units. As I'm sure you know, on the legacy remote, you can control the smoke. You can turn the smoke on and off, and you can control the intensity. But what you can't do is turn on and off individual smoke units on the engine. When you turn the smoke on, all of the smoke units come on. 
So with these switches, what you could do is shut off an individual element. So for instance, let's say I want to run the main smokestack and the whistle, but I want to turn off the dynamo injector smoke unit. I would just move this to off. That would disable that smoke unit while leaving these on. Now it should be noted that in the manual, Lionel says that if you're going to change these switches, you need to do so with the engine off because when the engine starts up, it does a read of these switches and then maintains those settings while the engine is in operation. So changing these switches while the engine is on won't make a difference. So for example, if I wanted to turn the whistle smoke effect off, I would shut the engine down, turn it off, and then start the engine back up. And then if I wanted to re-enable it, I would do the same thing. Shut the engine down, turn it back on, and then start the engine back up. Moving on towards the rear of the engine, we've got the dynamo right here. Now what is a dynamo? A dynamo is a small steam-powered electrical generator. And on the real-life engines, they would use that to generate electricity for stuff like the cab light and the headlight and so forth. They would take a little of the steam from the boiler and run it through the generator, and that would generate the power. And then you'd get a little stream of steam shooting out from the dynamo. Well, what Lionel did is they put a little smoke unit there so that when the engine is in operation, you get that plume of steam coming out of the dynamo, just like on the real-life engine. To fill the dynamo smoke unit, what you do is pop off the dynamo like that. And then there's a little funnel that Lionel provides with the engine. And you stick the funnel down in there and pour the smoke fluid in. Now when the engine is new, Lionel suggests that you prime the smoke unit with 20 to 30 drops of smoke fluid. And then when you're done, just take the funnel out and pop the dynamo piece back on. Like that. The final smoke effect on this engine is right here under the cab. You can't see it, but there's a little pipe here and there's another one on the other side. And when the engine is in operation, steam will shoot out of the side of the engine to simulate the look of the injectors on a real steam engine. Now, the smoke that comes out of the injectors comes from the same smoke unit that powers the dynamo. So when you fill this smoke unit up here with smoke fluid, you're providing smoke for the dynamo and the injectors. The cab on this engine is also very nicely done. We've got all sorts of nice detailing all around it. Separately applied grab irons. There's a separately applied curtain back here. There's a folding deck plate here. These windows open and close. We've got two nice cab figures inside the cab. And then up here, this roof vent opens up like that. Here's the interior of the cab, and as you can see, it's extremely well detailed. You've got hand-painted valves and meters everywhere, and then of course you've got that great operating firebox glow when the engine is in operation. The tender is also very well done. We've got lots of separately applied detailing all over the place. Ladders, grab irons, and piping and so forth. Very nice detailing down here on the truck side frames. We've got a real coal load here. These water hatches all open up like that. And this little toolbox is held down by a magnet, and when you take it off, it reveals the master volume control for the engine. And then on the back of the engine, we've got operating marker lights as well as a backup light. The paint job on this engine is flawless. I could not find any mistakes in the paint whatsoever. And of course, this engine is entirely made of die cast metal. There's very little plastic involved. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before I start this thing up is perhaps the coolest thing of all, and that is the new dual sound feature that these engines have. In most O-scale steam engines that you see today, the speaker for the sound is located in the tender. And that's okay, but the problem with that is that when you hear the engine sounds, or the whistle, or the bell, that sound is coming from the tender and not from the engine itself like it would in real life. Well, Lionel has changed all that by adding a second speaker inside the engine itself, and that localizes a lot of the sounds. So on this engine, when you blow the whistle or ring the bell, those sounds come from up here, not back here. It is really cool. I don't know if this video is going to be able to accurately convey what a difference that second speaker makes, but I promise, if you see these things in person, you're going to be blown away by what a difference it makes. Okay, so now I'm going to power this engine up, let you hear some of the sounds, see some of the features, and then we'll run it around the layout for a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and start her up. Now, you'll notice that I put the box that the engine came in behind the engine. The reason I did that is because it's a nice black background, and that will allow you to more easily see the smoke effects on the video. So let's start her up. Union Pacific, 3989, do you copy?
Now when it starts up, it'll take a minute for the smoke effects to kick in because you've got multiple smoke units and there's a lot of places where smoke's coming out, so it just takes a minute for it to get started. Okay, now we're going pretty good. You can see I've got a little smoke coming out of the smokestacks. Not much because we're not moving yet. There's a little coming out of the whistle. There's a whole bunch coming out of the dynamo back here. And there's even some steam coming out of the injectors now. Now check out the whistle and watch what happens when I blow the whistle. Here's a close-up of the injectors and the dynamo. You can see the smoke coming out of the injectors and the smoke coming out of the dynamo as well. Okay, now let's hear some of the sounds. They've got a blowdown effect that's pretty neat. They've got a sound for water filling up the tender. They've got some crew talk sounds. Here's that great quillable whistle again. And here's the bell. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but those whistle and bell sounds are coming from the engine, not so much from the tender. I've dimmed the lights a little bit to show you the ground lights. There's a ground light here, and there's one here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll them on out. Okay, that about wraps it up for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. These engines are simply amazing, and they're just a pleasure to run. And if you weren't thinking about getting one before you saw this video, you probably are now. Now, one final thought I wanted to leave you with. I wanted to impress upon all of you the importance of reading the directions that come with your engines or with any train item that you get. You know, I get a lot of emails from you guys asking questions that can be answered by simply reading the directions that came with whatever you bought. And on these high-end, delicate engines, if you don't read the directions, you could potentially damage your engine and then have to send it in for repair. So do yourself a favor and always read the directions from beginning to end. Anyway, I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.